in three, two, one. What's up, people of Earth? This is Dan Lockhart, and this is my YouTube channel. And yeah, I'm taking my red Honda out for a spin here. Like I said, if it does, if it's not spinning, it's not working. So anyway, every year I do at least one snow lawn project without YouTube, and this is it this time. getting closer to the spring season, spring skiing season, and in the springtime in Colorado we can have our biggest snowstorms. As I was watching the video that I recorded, I, I started thinking about, well, what would I say in this video? Uh, snow blowing is like, there's so many factors and variables that go into it. Uh, for instance, time of year, at the beginning of the year, there's not much snow piled up out there, or you no know snow piled up out there, so you have to start thinking about, well, later on in the year, how much snow is there going to be and where can I put it? And one year, I didn't think about that very much, and on that corner of the driveway there, I had a barn that was just getting so tall, it was going to be hard to blow it over the top of that barn. So I started thinking more in, in line with, um, I have to move the snow down to the end of the driveway where I have more room out in the front to move it on either side of the driveway and make it a little bit easier. It's like, oh, those are some of the things you have to think about. You can see here as I'm doing the patio, I kind of redirect it and push it out towards the front under the under the pergola here, through the pergola and under the pergola. I don't use the Honda for every snow blind project because it's a little bit uh, bigger, a little bit harder to manage. I think it weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 300 pounds, so you have to wrestle that around too when the mid turns. And, uh, but it does take a certain amount of energy to do that. Three pieces of snow removal equipment. This Honda is the HS928 build version. Uh, I bought it when we first moved up across the boot, which has been eight years ago now. I bought it in the summertime. I walked into the Honda dealership in the middle of July and I said, Hey, you got any snow blowers that uh, you put on sale since the summertime? So I got a pretty good deal on this one. I think I paid around 1800 bucks for it. Uh, the newer ones are way more expensive, but they're pretty nice too. My neighbor has one of the newer ones with the with the tank treads on it and electronic sheet control. On this one, you can see on mine, uh, it's got a hand crank on it, so you want to want to change the direction of the sheet. You have to crank that around. On my Toro, it has a little handle on it that you just flip that handle over, and you can point it shoot up or down off of the same handle control <coughs> and that just happens in a snap 
uh, I do like that about the Toro. My, my Toro is a, a lot smaller though and I, I use it to go on places uh, that the Honda doesn't uh, fit in as well. This one's a little bit bigger than the Toro. Also the third piece of my equipment is my yard tractor, my Cup Cadet with the 22 horsepower Kohler motor on it. Uh, I put a plow blade on the front of that. A lot of the times, because my driveway is 150 feet long, I'll take the uh, yard tractor out and plow all the snow down to the end of the driveway and then blow it back up into the yard. And I just looked up the spec on this one. It, I have to correct something I said earlier. I said it was 300 pounds. It's actually 209 pounds. It just feels like it's 300 pounds sometimes. It's a, it's a pretty good size machine. You can see in the front of mine there too, I've got a, a drift cutter. That's what that square thing is up in the front of that. that uh, what it does is it cuts through the, the berm and it'll knock it down so it can come into the auger and that's the purpose of that thing so uh, 209 pounds and it's 270 cc all the HS928 motors are the same displacements this has been a really good machine the only problem I've had with it is I had a leaking seal on the axle that was my fault because I uh, when I first bought it I, I tried to take it out of the back of my pickup and it was a little bit off of the ground. It was probably four inches or so. The, uh, when I pulled it off the back, the pickup kind of dropped down and I think that caused the seals to start leaking. But that's the only problem that I've had with this machine. I expect it's going to last a lifetime. wondering how far will this snow thrower actually send the snow and according to the spec it says they all do the same all the HS 928s uh, will uh, shoot the snow out uh, 49 feet so that's a pretty good distance uh, it's very helpful when those berms start getting built up that you can get some uh, clearance over there on the side. Oh, I was going to tell you one of the other things you have to think about too when you're moving snow is uh, if the wind's blowing at all, you have to make sure that you're going in the direction of the wind, otherwise, you can end up with a face full of snow. You can kind of point that sheet control down a little bit to keep it out of the wind zone, but it, it's just going to come back and get you. They do make a cab for these things. You can put a, over the handlebars and uh, kind of protect yourself a little bit. I'm not sure how effective they are. I've read a lot of good feedback about them. Someday I may get a cab for it. All of my machines obviously serve various different purposes. The Honda will, as kind of the, the workhorse out of the three for moving snow. The tractor does really, really well with the blade on the front, but um, the problem with that is if the snow gets too deep, then I'm spinning my back wheels and I have chains on the, the tractor. I don't have a weight set. You can get uh, a set of weights that, that sit on the back wheels that uh, I think it's around 50 pounds or something like that. Uh, it should make quite a bit of difference, but you know, if, if you didn't have the chains on it, then you wouldn't be going anywhere with it. And then, so my Toro is the Toro Snowmaster, and the thing I like about that snowblower is that uh, to make it move forward, you just press forward on the handle. And if, it, if the snow's not really deep, it's, uh, it's a pretty good machine as well. Plus, I use it on the side of my house here where 
Uh, it's kind of hard to get the Honda in, in between uh, where that side door is over there. Once I put the snow, snow down off the roof, then I have to be able to move that snow across the driveway. And uh, the Toro works pretty well for that. The thing about the Toro is it doesn't have a reverse. So you have to pull it back manually. throwing the snow on the side of the garage up here. Well, uh, the first year that we had the garage, we had a really, really big snow winter, and I didn't blow the snow off the side of the garage here, and there's four windows that are ground level windows in the garage. And what happened was the snow started getting so deep that it was almost uh, starting to bury those windows. And I'm sure those, the windows would have just caved in under the weight of the snow. And, and so I had to get out there with the shovel and dig those windows out. And uh, I learned my lesson that uh, it took me about three days to get those windows completely dug out. Or I don't know. It was, five or six feet of snow on the side there and just to make little holes in front of the window so uh, that wouldn't fill up with snow that was quite a job so I make it a practice now to blow out the side of the garage using Phil Mora for my video editing here and they've added a new feature that I think is pretty cool in the, the, in the software it's called speed ramping and so instead of just changing the duration of a whole video clip you can actually adjust the speed at different parts during the clip it's got little handles that you can drag up and down and you can set the speed of the, the video within those handles and it's, it's actually pretty cool so if you had like a you know a five minute clip and you wanted it to go two times faster in the middle you could actually ramp it up to do that or up and down you know you could just make it do different kinds of waves and time shifting which uh, i think is a pretty cool feature thinking a little bit uh, I know I had to adjust for it uh, 
our Property Owners Association has a service set. They will send a tractor or a snowblower out to your property based on the amount of snow that's happened overnight. I think that uh, the beginning of the contracts, like if it snows six inches, they just show up. You can do it where they show up automatically, or you can do an on-demand thing. Well, I've signed up for the on-demand uh, snowblowing process because you never know. I might, you know, could get in on my head out here if we had a, a storm that dumps, you know, three or four feet all at once. So we did have a big storm like that earlier this year. But uh, anyway, you're kind of at the mercy of when they get around to you on their schedule. And so that, that was one thing I had to kind of think about when we moved up here. I want to be in control of my own driveway and, you know, being able to get out. And although I appreciate the service that the Property Owners Association provides, I, I want to be more in control of my own schedule, so that's why I do my own snowblowing. I make a track out in the backyard here for the our dogs to be able to go poop and pee back here when they need to. Uh, I also try to keep the snow off the roof back here because I don't want it coming down on them. Uh, that snow can really build up and you know weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds. It can be very dangerous if you don't manage it as well. Uh, but I take care of the backyard for our boys. chains on this snow blower too but uh, since I put my machine in my garage I didn't want up marring our uh, stone pavers out there or the cement in the garage so I took the chains off but you know if we had a really massive winter and I had to deal with a lot more snow I think I'd put it back on again I just about got it stuck right here. <laughs> to the end of the video and if you've gotten this far I do appreciate you watching and if you like my video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below and we'll see you in the next one now here's the